Hello, I'm Richard Gisbert, and you're at the Listening Post. This week, the off-air remarks that put one Lebanese TV station where it did not want to be, in the headlines. The Czech closed-circuit TV camera that was open to Internet hackers. How a giant puppet and three helicopters became a viral advertising legend. And the two-man SWAT team that uses chopsticks to catch its prey. Welcome back to the Listening Post. Here's a good way to lose your job as a news anchor. When you think you're off the air, trust the sound man to turn your microphone off. Then say what you really think about politicians. That's what a newsreader on a Lebanese channel did recently during coverage of the assassination of a parliamentarian there. Not only did she get fired when her words were broadcast, she also landed her channel, NBN TV, in a mess of trouble and exposed once again Lebanon's highly factionalized broadcast media where the major political players snipe at each other, usually through TV channels that they control. Lebanon and its unique television landscape, that's our starting point this week in the News Divide. It's during the coverage of stories like the murder of Walid Eidu in a car bombing in West Beirut that Lebanon's television channels show their true political colors. In Lebanon, you can't separate between politics and media. And media is very important in my country. And each party or each religion or Sunni or Shia or Druze, or, they have their own uh, TV, their own broadcaster. Take, for example, the pro-government Future TV, which started its coverage of the assassination this way. Walid Ahmad Aido. Walid Ahmad Aido is a new name on the list of the nation's martyrs. The name has been added to the list of others, including Rafi Al Hariri, Basil Falhan, Samir Qasir, George Hawi, Jubran Twaini, Pierre Jmeir, and his companions. Walid Ahmad Aido is a hero in the new battle for independence. He is a symbol of the Cedar Revolution. His life was taken away by the hand of terrorism on a street of the coast of Beirut. The victim was characterized in most coverage as a pro government, anti Syrian member of Parliament. Syrian state-run TV quickly reported that the Assad government condemned the explosion and denied responsibility for it. And it condemned the campaign of lies by some Lebanese who habitually accuse Syria of responsibility after any crime and before any investigation has even started. NBN, the Lebanese channel at the center of this story, is owned by political leader Nabi Barry and is more pro-Syrian. Its newsreader, Sausen Darwish, thought she was off the air, that her mic had been killed when she was talking to a field reporter about the assassination. <laughs> so what took them so long to kill him, she said, followed by sounds of laughter. Then, of another anti-Syrian MP, she said, he should be next. I'm counting them down. It's not glee, she added. We've just had enough of them. The story was first reported in Al Nahar, a pro government newspaper. In the pre YouTube era, that probably would have been the end of it. It was actually a story in the Al Nahar Daily, as well as their online site, that uh, had covered this. And as a result of that, I the footage was made available on YouTube. The new media was very um, a, big, a big factor in this case because YouTube, uh, the video sharing website, uh, has really become a, a bastion of Lebanese uh, broadcasting footage, uh, especially in this time uh, uh, of, of, of tension in Lebanon. The power of, the, of this particular story, obviously, is the, the media image and the sound affiliated with this and the idea of someone being caught on tape. So YouTube offered that, uh, that method, that way out. Once the clips made it to YouTube, then other media began to do the story, and the anchor's comments became the talk of the Lebanese blogosphere. So if there was a plan to uh, destabilize Lebanese society, we've definitely seen a fruition of that uh, with these kind of off-the-cuff, uh, slip-of-the-tongue comments um, that, really, that really kind of uh, peel off the, the outer layer of an increasingly mi militaristic Lebanese society. Then NBN issued a statement saying it had fired the anchor and the sound technician involved. It apologized for the incident but suggested that its critics on Lebanon's other stations, which have their own political agendas, were being a bit self-righteous. You can see how uh, the NBN press release, where they dismissed uh, the reporter, you can see in that ending, which was really targeted for the Lebanese home audience, which wasn't going to make it onto CNN's coverage, which was, you know, 
people in glass houses shouldn't throw stones, is essentially what they were saying. You media, you other media, you government, pro-government media, you guys are playing the same things. On live television, a news anchor gloats about a politician's death and wishes more of the victim's colleagues faced the same fate. Global news channels like CNN covered the incident, including the second parliamentarian threatening legal action against NBN for putting his life in danger. Al Arabiya, the Saudi-owned pan-Arab channel, played up the story, airing the entire exchange over and over again. The story also spilled into the Arabic-language print media. The London-based pan-Arab paper, Al Shark Al Ausset, wrote, this type of media is not based on neutrality or a commitment to journalistic professionalism, but rather on bigotry and a commitment to a specific ideology and sect, with their homeland being the least of their concerns. In an editorial, Ya Libnan, which tends to support the government and criticize Syria, called the firing a poor attempt by NBN to wash its hands clean. It does not solve the systemic problem. Referring to the laughter on the tape, the paper said, listen closely to the video. And it is clear that Darwish's sick perspective was not an isolated incident. These provocations could very easily push Lebanon into a civil war. I think the situation is a result of the ethnic tensions. You can find it in all uh, the fields, whatever, in the media or with the ordinary people, normal people in the streets. And this ethnic tension has existed even before, but now it's escalated by the media and by the assassinations. To outsiders, the comments on NBN were shocking and hateful. But to those who know the country, to savvy Lebanese consumers of media, this incident simply put out into the open what they already knew. Lebanon is a country with a unique ethnic makeup and media that mirrors its factionalized society. This sort of an event, whether it's captured on YouTube or by anyone in the future or not, it's going to continue. It is below the surface oftentimes. It increasingly is bubbling over. And it is something that is extraordinarily dangerous. As for Lebanese TV stations in general, uh, I, I don't see a lot of uh, hope right now because um, the media just reflects society. And uh, that's definitely happening here in Lebanon. I don't see any change. Uh, I don't see any hope, really, that the media will all of a sudden be independent overnight. Checking in on that story now, our Global Village Voices. The story of the NBN report's comments about the Edo assassination isn't necessarily an indictment of the media organization itself, since it commendably fired her. Rather, it's an example of the Lebanese media in general being part and parcel of the sectarian and political strife afflicting the country, since news organizations are often owned by or allied to the various factions. Got a smart take on global media? Want to weigh in as one of our Global Village voices? Then email us at listeningpost at aljazeera.net. If you have the technology, webcam, video, or even camera phone, we'll provide you with the platform. Time now for Listening Post News Bites. In Iraq, the body of kidnapped newspaper editor Filah Mishtab was found in northeast Baghdad four days after his abduction. Mr. Mishtab was seized by armed gunmen as he drove to work. His paper, Al Sabah, is part of the U.S.-funded Iraqi Media Network, and he's the latest victim in a string of attacks against journalists working for state-run media. According to the Committee to Protect Journalists, he is the 85th Iraqi journalist killed since the war began in March 2003. Czechs watching morning television had a bit of a shock recently when they saw a famous local landmark blown up before their eyes on the broadcast. It turns out that unbeknownst to the channel, CT2, internet hackers had tampered with the webcam that the show was using and added a nuclear blast complete with a mushroom cloud. British Prime Minister Tony Blair's recent attack on the media, he called them feral beasts, may not have had the intended effect. The term has been adopted as a badge of honor by journalists there. A group calling itself Feral Beasts of Media has sprung up on the social networking site Facebook. They describe themselves as hunting in packs in search of that 24-hour breaking news story, tearing people and reputations to bits. So far, more than 500 members have signed up. In Zimbabwe, a draft law has been approved allowing the government to intercept email, phone calls and mail without a court order. China is to provide Zimbabwe with the web monitoring technology. Press freedom groups and Zimbabwean internet providers have criticized the bill, calling it a violation of human rights and privacy. 
A new cartoon which portrays the Bush administration as a gang of unruly children has launched on the U.S. cable network Comedy Central. Lil Bush follows the adventures of George Bush and his friends Lil Condi, Lil Cheney, and Lil Rummy. The cartoon is the brainchild of Donick Carey, who also worked on The Simpsons. The Comedy Central Network is the home of Jon Stewart's Daily Show. That's the fake news program that routinely targets the U.S. administration and the neocon movement. Here at the Listening Post, we often issue health warnings before we show you clips of state-run television. Well, this week, our clip is a health warning, neatly put together by Thai State Television. ครับการออกกําลังกายทําให้ผิวพรรณเปล่งปลั่งแดงเป็นธรรมชาติครับการออกกําลังกายทําให้จิตใจสดชื่นครับ Coming up in part 2 how advertisers are targeting you in cyberspace <laughs>